it's they're just outstanding. No, we happen to be in the winter uh, right now. Yes, sir. So I would say that probably western Maine kind of tips a little bit more in favor of the winter because of the mountains and the ski areas. Is that pretty safe? It does. That's a very good. I'm glad you brought that up because our skiing industry is huge in this state, and as airfares have continued to escalate, I think folks look for things closer home to do for a ski experience. And our mountains, our major mountains, are all uh, ready for winter with snowmaking capabilities. And of course, as cold winters we had and the fresh snow that we have, we just sent out a tweet again the other day and Facebook to I forget how many hundreds of thousands of folks letting them know that, you know, the trails are being groomed, there's mm. lots of snowmobiling open out there, the ski lifts are doing great. And that yeah. continues to grow in popularity every year. And that brings people more inland too. I mean, you think of the, ma the main yeah. brand is is the Rocky Coast and the Lobster and Lighthouses, but on on the off season, if you will, um, bringing people to the interior, the the Sugarloafs and the mountains of the yeah. region, the Sunday Rivers is is important because Maine has so much more to offer than just than yeah. just the Rocky yeah. Coast. And I, I that's a very good point. And I appreciate you pointing out people still one of our most asked questions year round in the visitor center is where can I see a moose? And of course <laughs> our mountains and lakes are just yeah. phenomenal. I mean I'm uh, I'm, I'm partial to that myself, and I mean, there's so many places in Maine you can go like that and not not be crowded out. I mean, that is one of the things the allure of both the international and the domestic traveler that Maine still offers is the wide open expanses we have and the fact that you can be in places and not be or feel crowded. And we have such beauty, as I said, it's always hard for me to pick out two or three or one, yeah. to be honest with you. Well, you know, one of the things that I hear as a chamber director all the time, it seems like there's... Um, seems like there's these two forces. There's tourism and there's non-tourism businesses. <laughs> and, and really my contention is a strong mm. tourism industry um, helps out all of those other businesses too. Can you talk a little bit about the size of the tourism industry and, and is there any maybe correlation between a strong tourism season and a, and a strong non-business tourist related I sure can, Stephen. I appreciate you, you touching on that. Uh, industry is very important to Maine. I mean, jobs of all types and what people do. I mean, our pulp and paper industry, our agriculture, our forestry, our aquaculture, they're all huge. One of the things that, I, that supports all of them in a great way is tourism. Last year, the tourism, or in 09, the tourism uh, sent back to the General Fund of Maine $414 million. Now that doesn't count the day trippers. That would be myself traveling to Kittery to do some shopping with my wife or whatever. Unless there's an overnight stay in it, there's still taxes that are generated, just as there are with folks coming up out of southern New England into Maine to shop. That's another $100 million on top of that. So we've been as high as $540 million in past years to the General Fund. I don't believe there's any other segment of the industry uh, of any industry in Maine that contributes that much in tax revenues to the general fund, so it's huge. Another point about that is we've run into folks that, and I think it's a great opportunity for us, that come to Maine to visit or recreate, get to know our folks, get to know what we have to offer here, and the next seed you want to plant in your mind, would it be a great place to extend your business, start a business, or be a part of? And that's happened in some cases where we've had folks that have come in and have done just that. Mm. How are you able to track those dollars to distinguish between I need a new bathing suit so I'm running to Kittery to get one or you know or, or people that are actually from away is it credit cards or how do you track well the it, it's yes Kim it is it's credit cards are part of that it's the overall tax sales that go on in the eight tourism regions that are subdivided uh, by revenue services in Maine. The state planning offices, the numbers that I come back with, those are all, those are all come about the research that the state planning office does. And then there are models that are set up that they use and also uh, Davidson Peterson in Kennebunkport is Maine's research uh, agency now that does a lot of those calculations that come back to the office uh, via the state planning office. So it's all based on the sales side of things. There's a percentage that our industry gets credit for from the retail sales, uh, gasoline sales, a number of things. And it's a, it's a complicated formula for someone who has trouble balancing his checkbook that I wouldn't even begin to try to explain to you. Mm. Uh. 
<clears throat> our tourism region, I sit on the Kennebec Valley Tourism Council, and our tourism region goes from Richmond to Jackman. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've got the moose. Anybody who wants to come and see them. Um, <laughs> but that's a really diverse region. I mean, yeah. we have, you know, we have state government down in the southern part of our area. Mm -hmm. And then we've got, you know, snowmobiling and fishing and whitewater rafting. Um, we, we don't have any lighthouses in our region. Um, I do. I've got a lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Um, <laughs> Has this this whole dividing it into eight tours and regions, do you think that, I, I guess I'm not enamored by the way it's divided mm -hmm. because it's really hard mm -hmm. for us to market that kind of diversity, to, to get out, to brand ourselves, if you will. Um, has it been successful, the eight marketing regions around the state, or mm. could that be improved upon? Well, you know, I've, I've worked at this almost 13 years now and dealt with these eight tourism regions, and I have to admit, it's very, very challenging. It's challenging us for every year when we put the book together to get new edit, mm -hmm. new photographs and things that make it interesting to someone. When you stop and think that you can take all of the other New England states and put them within the boundaries of Maine and still have all kinds of space left over, it's a little um, awesome to try to deal with that task at hand. I've thought about that at times. How would you divide it? Would you go south to north and split it three ways? Would you do a central, a southern, a northern Maine? I, when I look at all those, Kim, I don't know that anything that works any better but, than what we have now because if we direct the person into the visitor center or they come into your information center in either one of your chambers and you sit down and you open up the map and you show them where they are and where they want to go, you almost, from a regional standpoint, it's easier to do that way than it would be if you divided it any other way. I think the size that we're dealing with to this state, the massive size of it, really is a challenge in itself. I will tell you things like the Shorty Air Trail that come through your area, those are huge and they end up down along the Kennebec back into um, uh, down on the coast. I mean when you look at that, how far it stretches and what it has to offer, from my standpoint when I look at that, we have so much more to bring that person back again that while the challenge is, is selling them on them, I think we have many things to come back. Well, you've explored this part of Maine. You need to come back and explore this. Yeah. The, the lighthouse and the lobster are always going to be a draw, but once we get them here, we have so much more to offer them, and that's what people will tell you. Uh, I know from research the state did last year that we're a repeat draw for folks. They come back mm -hmm. multiple times once they've been to visit us. Yeah. The only other place I know of that can say that is Hawaii. You know, as, as I listen to this, you know, there's all different types of things that we wanted to talk about in this show from, from the snowmobiling to the backpacking to the lobsters. Yeah. That to most people, it's always a Maine lobster. It's not a, you know, New Hampshire lobster or a Canadian lobster. Great point. But, you know, Kim and I were talking and, and and we said to ourselves, selves, <laughs> <laughs> that tourism is such a part of main business that we thought that maybe we should just make a tourism second uh, segment for inside main business. What do you think, Vaughn? I think, think that's an outstanding idea. <laughs> think you'd come back and talk about the tourism industry? I'd love the opportunity to spend some more time with you and bring some folks in along those lines. I think it would be great, and I think your viewers would really enjoy it as well. It's an exciting subject. It so really all in is. favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Uh, all right. right. We're going to start a, a tourism segment of inside main business um, just because it is really so important, seriously, to our main economy. And there's so many different segments out there that we can talk about, to including Kim's concern, are we really maybe marketing things as efficiently as we could? And, and sometimes the business community can, can add something to that. Great so idea. I think that's the way we'll end the show with the fact that, Vaughn, you're going to be back and we're going to have some more shows talking about Inside Maine Tourism. What do you well, think? Well, thank you. I think it's wonderful. I look forward there, to the opportunity. Folks, you just saw democracy in action. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of great information about Maine's tourism industry, and it really does help all of us. A strong tourism industry in Maine will lift all boats, and we're going to learn more about that in subsequent shows. So with that, I think we have to close it off for now. Please stay with us. Kim and I will do the wrap in just a moment, but it's been great having Vaughn uh, on the show with us on Inside Maine Business. Fresh snow, fresh air, and incredible scenery awaits you in the Kennebec and Moose River Valleys this winter. Enjoy an endless number of high-quality groomed snowmobile trails and places to stay. If you like winter fishing, you'll find world-class ice fishing in the Kennebec Valley. In addition to art and antique galleries and a wide array of restaurants to suit every palate, visit us soon at www.kennebecvalley.org to download or request our travel guide. 
and create your winter memories in the Kennebec and Moose River Valleys today. You've heard it all before. Come locate your business in our region. At MidMaine, we've got a different message. We say, come visit the Waterville region and let us show you a great place to live, work, and play. You'll find we offer a diversified economy, progressive business climate, and an outstanding lifestyle. But don't take our word for it. Let us show you what we offer. It's easy to arrange a visit. Just a quick stop at the MidMaine Chamber of Commerce website will get you started. And we're back on Inside Maine Business. Steve, I think, I think Vaughn answered all those questions that I had in the beginning yeah. about tourism in the state of Maine. And I think it'll, be, um, I think it'll make a compelling segment going forward with our, with our program um, because tourism is so all-encompassing and mm -hmm. geographically the state of Maine is so huge that I think it'll allow us to touch on different facets and aspects of tourism from around the state. Uh, absolutely. I mean, when you start to connect the dots, you know, we talk about snowmobilers. Well, that's snowmobile dealers, and that's people that need to fix those snowmobiles. And, you know, those people live places and their kids go to schools. I mean, when you really start to connect all the dots, Maine tourism is huge for Maine's overall economy. There's just no way you can't say that. And, and you know, one of the things that, or a couple of areas, we didn't get into tourism in the spring, and we, we really didn't get into um, leaf peeping and fall tourism, yeah. and that is huge. We, that's why we got to have that segment. I mean, you know, it, it really, uh, it makes sense, because I think Mainers will actually be proud, our viewers will be proud to know how much Maine tourism uh, does for them, as well as maybe they'll find out some other places that they never knew about. I mean, there are segments of Maine that I'm sure that, I mean, I know there are segments of Maine that I've never been to that I've never explored. And yeah. um, if we can get that word out um, and pique people's interest, then maybe we'll have more day trippers and people exploring different parts of yeah. their own state. I, I can tell you from being in two different chambers in two very diverse areas that that's absolutely true. People do not even sometimes know what's in their backyards. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, not only can we expand people's appreciation of Maine tourism, but get some more of those day trippers spending their money in the state of Maine. We really do have it all here. We do. What more do we need to say? <laughs> Folks, we look forward to bringing you more uh, Inside Maine Tourism uh, on Inside Maine Business. So with that being said, we appreciate you watching the show today. And as always, if you missed any part of the show or another show, please feel free to go out to mainvod.com and you can watch all of our shows in their entirety uh, out there. So with that being said, take care and we look forward to seeing you again soon on Inside Main Business. Inside Main Business with Kim Lindloff and Steve Wallace is Maine's only business show hosted by Maine business leaders. Lindloff and Wallace know firsthand what it takes to bring business to Maine and what goes on behind the headlines of Maine's biggest business stories. Inside Maine Business will bring you the movers and shakers of Maine's business world. From banking, investment, real estate development, and tourism to Maine's most successful companies, Inside Maine Business will bring you the answers you need about Maine business.